Hi, I'm Taylor. Let's talk about portfolio construction and budgeting for follow-on reserves. So this is an example of a construction that I use for doing portfolio construction. It basically looks at the average company, the average company you invest into, and looks at how the company progresses and changes over time, basically what additional rounds do they raise, at what valuations, and then what portion of the companies raise those rounds. So what proportions raise additional rounds so, or how many are written off or exit kind of before the next round. Now, in the default assumptions, I usually have a, a, an overall assumption of like, what's my overall uh, invested capital I have? What's my time frame for new investments? And then what portion is allocated for, for fo new versus follow-on? Now, when we get to the follow-on, I use a more detailed structure to say, okay, well, what do the following rounds actually kind of look like? How many additional rounds I invest into? What do my following checks look like? What are my expectations in ownership and dilution kind of from them? And then how does it affect overall returns as well? So I, I usually set up a structure like this to say, hey, look at what the average initial investment is, and then what are the expectations in terms of the rounds? And then I set up like these graduation rates basically. And then I'll calculate out what, that, what those rates mean in terms of actual number of companies, in terms of how many initial checks you make, and then looking at the uh, how many companies raise kind of each additional rounds. Um, and then I'll set up some timing assumptions around what is the time between individual rounds. And then usually assumptions that say, hey, well, if a company does exit, what do they exit at at each one of these individual, uh, at each one of these kind of rounds? Um, now I put in here seed, series A, series D, and that's a, just a default assumption for like a company making initial investments at seed. Usually the convention that I use for this is basically these, they should reflect whatever your entry point is. So if you're investing at the series B level, then continuing on, just just the first one is series B to kind of look at the chains of portfolio of the company, kind of post your initial investment. There's no need to go and backdate all the, your back, the, the past performance of it. So uh, the complication is basically says, okay, well, what should my follow ones be? Now, this is basically a detailed structure I use for doing portfolio capital allocation for and for budgeting for following reserves. And what I looked at each one is basically for each individual round, it says, well, hey, how much money do I have to invest? Of my total capital I've allocated to, to invest, um, how much capital do I have to have to invest in each round? In the first round, everything goes towards new investments, right? Um, at the second stage, I basically looked at, okay, well, of the capital that I had initially kind of had fully invested, what's left over to do follow-ons? My default assumption here is basically to say that I'm going to, on average, uh, invest into every company that's raising additional round, and then the mod is going to calculate out my pro rata amount based upon what my expected pro rata are going to be, based upon the uh, increase in valuation of the company at the additional round, and my new investment. What are my expected pro rata from them? And I say, okay, well, I'm going to do my the, the default assumption is I'm going to do my full pro rata. Uh, if I can, uh, for the number of companies I can do. And if I can't do it for all the companies, the, the follow-on amount automatically adjusts down to say, well, I can't do my follow-on amount across all the companies. Now, that's on an average basis. And in reality, you may choose to do some follow-ons and not do some follow-ons. The metrics up here will reflect your av the average company that raises the additional round, meaning the companies you did do follow-ons and the companies you didn't do follow-ons. Um, uh, for kind of full portfolio analysis of, of returns. But I usually want to uh, detail out a strategy that says, okay, well, but my, based on my individual my individual strategy in terms of what I'm doing in follow ups what we're going to do. The default assumptions are set, uh, as I kind of explained before, just for simplicity, uh, but the assumptions here allow you to create an additional layer of complexity to it. So if you choose to deviate from that default assumption, it's very easy to do so. So usually I'll say, okay, well, what if I, what if I, I'm going to uh, use a strategy under super paradas? So I mean, going above and beyond what I would have been expected to be able to invest based upon my my parata strategy. So let's just say I'm even doing, you know, seven. My this expectation of paradas would be like 325 or as currently constructed. So let's just say I do super paradas. Um, and then my assumptions, I'm just going to assume I'm going to do 100%, or I could say, you know what, I'm only going to do you know, 75% of that. And what these numbers are coming through calculating is basically saying, okay, well, if that's my strategy, based on the number of companies in my portfolio, my expectations of how many companies are going to raise initial rounds, how much, do, how much money do I need to do my target? 
And it says, okay, well, I don't actually have that much money. I only have this much money based upon the amount of the capital left over. And it says, well, okay, well, if I'm doing my 750K check sizes, I can only do 44% of the actual kind of companies that are rising. Uh, this is my ownership percentage based on this strategy over time. Now, this number up here st is still gonna, ref is gonna reflect the average company. So it's gonna reflect the companies that did do my super pro rata and the companies that didn't do my super pro rata. And it's sort of the ownership percentage uh, average between uh, between those sets of companies. And this one down here is gonna show the ownership percentage specifically for the companies that I did do my pro ratas in. So they're gonna, they're gonna vary a little bit. Um, I like doing this general structure because it allows me to understand uh, and verify that my follow-on strategy is possible, right? So, you know, for, for example, like, if I may have a follow-on strategy where I'm gonna invest more capital later on rounds, but based on this construction, this is my assumption, I couldn't actually do it. Like I wouldn't have enough capital left over to do the additional rounds, and so I was actually not gonna invest follow-ons into those rounds. So I can return this back to the default assumption. So in this one, you can actually see it's it, it's saying that if I do, um, uh, on on average, every deal, um, I only need say 9.3 million to do my full paradas. I have 9.4 budgeted for other ones, and so some capital is is carrying over to be available for the next rounds, and that will continue to carry through the next rounds until no more capital is available. Now these models, these forecast models, you use those the timings of these things to create a schedule of when follow capital is deployed. Um, but getting beyond, not worrying about that part of it. Uh, this part is still valuable to kind of think through what a follow-on strategy looks like and to really verify that it's possible uh, given your expectations of what you think the future rounds are gonna be. This is a fairly detailed thing to model in general, so it's easy to get lost in the complexity of this. It can also be hard to get the numbers to reflect your strategy or to go through that cycle of having your strategy reflect your numbers. It can be kind of like take some, some iterations basically to, to work out that. Uh, your strategy is possible or if you should adjust your strategy based upon that. Um, if you have questions around portfolio construction or modeling following reserves, happy to help anytime. Thanks.